What's going on today, guys? Getting out spraying some warm season stuff. We're going to be using and talking today primarily about a uh, really old school, slightly controversial, controversial uh, herbicide. So stay tuned for all the excitement and action. It's that stuff. Here's another one. It's a little cooler today than it was yesterday, but uh, it's Bermuda. It usually stays really clean, but he's got some hen bit that popped up. I didn't do a fall pre-emergent. I don't generally do a fall pre-emergent, but if I did, this wouldn't be here. And it's obvious that's where it's coming from. That's the neighbor. But like I said, it's a little cooler today. So we're going 32 ounce of atrazine, half an ounce of methylfuron, some crop oil concentrate and a little uh, six eight ounce, uh, six to eight ounce splash of dismiss in there. We'll speed this stuff up quite a bit because as long as it's cool, it's going to be really slow moving. But uh, I just want to burn it down a little bit with some dismiss. Step it up. Let them see some results. All right, as you can see, we're also spraying perdiamine with uh, everything we're spraying right now. This time of year, uh, this spring pre-emergent, late winter pre-emergent, however you want to call it, is very important. Crabgrass prevention and all that kind of stuff. If I'd have put a fall pre-emergent on this yard over here, it, it probably would not have picked up its neighbor's hen bit, but I'm always I'm so busy that time of year, I don't really get around to a lot of them getting a fall pre-emergent on and just like to give it a break for the, for the root action. Oh, Alan's having a rough time up there with all that prodiamine on it. Hang on, buddy. I don't care nothing won't be able to grow anymore up there. All right, on to the next one. Oh, I know I always talk about not running much prodiamine on centipede. Uh, I am putting it on some of the centipede yards this year, but I'm going to follow up when we do our uh, fertilizer round after green up with... Uh, some of uh subvert products subvert mpk's prefix see how that works out because supposedly prefix will negate some of the negative negative aspects of pre-emergence on your roots i've been rolling along today here's one just of note it's pretty clean i did not put a fall pre-emergent in and i did do a post in the fall um it's got ryegrass in it. Uh, the the county uh, last year put water in and, and dug up and ryegrassed these areas. And like I said, I killed the ryegrass in in the fall, but some of it has returned. But anyway, it's dead now. Dead man, dead ryegrass walking right there. All right, uh, this is a yard I just got called out to for a, it was on my list for a landscaper to spray a centipede, but uh, I don't know how they're growing centipede under all these uh, oak trees, but they are. But anyway, uh, that's the beauty of spraying with permagreen. You can uh, custom mix your tanks. So in this tank, I've been spraying methyl furon with the rest of them, but all these nice hardwood trees out here that the turf grows right up to, roots sticking out everywhere. We are going to eliminate the metal furon from the tank here, obviously, because of the trees. Yard mullet here with this centipede is the first time I've ever treated this. He's got uh, fescue in the back. I seeded the fescue in the fall and I've been back to work on the fescue a couple times. But this is the first shot on the centipede, cleaning it up. All right, the end of a pretty good and productive day with the old permagreen. I'd spray, uh, you know, stuff like this that I can't spray on cool season grass out of the old one. But anyway, that's just this is how I do it. Got it all yellow, gotta wash it off. And get out of this sun a little bit. I'll set the camera up somewhere and we'll talk atrazine. Atrazine is a member of the trizine family. 
of the New York trizines. Anyway, you know, uh, like we talked about uh, using the puridines on the fescue in the last video, triclopyr, fluoroxapyr, uh, atrazine is a trizine. Uh, atrazine is not for cool season grass at all. But the cool thing about it is I can run this on, uh, I like to use it on dormant Bermuda. You can use it on centipede in St. Augustine and Zoysia. So I can go across any kind of warm season grass with it. So I don't usually spray it on active Bermuda because it can be harsh on it. But uh, I get a call. Stand by. The phone has been ringing nonstop, which is good and bad. I can't get nothing done and I'm getting lots of more stuff to do. But anyway, it's changed angles a little bit so the sun isn't in my eyes. I forgot what I was saying. Oh. Atrazine. Atrazine is a limited use uh, product. It's restricted use, I guess you would call that, to professionals only. I mean, but um, one of the main reasons is it's extremely mobile in the soil. So you have to be very careful when using this. I wouldn't use it on sandy soil or near any kind of uh, uh, water you know like a stream lake anything like that because it, it it moves right through the soil a lot of herbicides can uh bind with organic matter or different ions and crap like that in the soil and stay put for a while not so with atrazine it moves right through the ground really quickly so you got to be careful because it'll find you way in it'll find its way into your groundwater or into lakes and streams and rivers and stuff like that uh what I do to try to help with that, to hold it in place a little longer, and it'll hold it in place a little longer, make it work better, and not run through the ground and get in the groundwater and stuff like that, is I will run some crop oil concentrate with it, and that crop oil concentrate will help hold it in that top soil profile. You gotta be really careful with atrazine because it can run into shrub beds and things like that and kill shrubs. Uh, we're talking in this video a lot we're combining atrazine with things like methyl furon uh simazine uh and all the yards have been getting prodiamine we're getting our pre-emergent dose on these things for spring uh when you're combining it with things like methyl furon even if you're not I avoid spraying this over tree roots things like that because you can definitely wipe out some trees with uh methyl furon uh i don't use atrazine more than once a season. In a lot of cases, I don't even use it every season. Uh, it's kind of a good idea with a lot of herbicides not to continually use the same thing over and over and over. Uh, atrazine is a very old herbicide and a very overused herbicide, and there has been lots of uh, resistant weeds developed. And uh, so if you give your yards a break from this and only use it once a year, always use it in conjunction with something I, I rarely if ever most likely never use it by itself so that's another thing um it if you hit it right and time it right and have it combined with uh another product like your methyl furon or sulfentrazone or both it is extraordinarily effective at cleaning up yards and the great thing about it is uh like what i do i run up with so many mixed yards and so many calls for new yards and stuff so i can just run right through every warm season grass type with it and and not worry about it you do want to avoid spraying this as it gets later towards spring and grass starts transitioning when uh warm season grass is transitioning out trying to turn green and you spray it with the stuff you will significantly set your significantly significantly set your green up back so don't don't be running this too late but you don't want to run it when it's super cold either so when you got those warm warmer days in the summer usually i'm good anywhere in the 50s and above i'm i'm happy spraying this and usually see good results anyway so that's a that's a little atrazine talk uh I looked on the internet a little bit to see what the what the main beefs with the environmentalists were on it, and and yeah, I agree with them that it is it is very easily uh, moved into groundwater and streams and rivers and stuff. So that is a big concern. So be extra cautious using it like that. Uh, I did not 
see any real substantiated that I could find real proof for on human health concerns and a, and a herbicide this old that has been used so much, if, if it was a true concern, uh, it would be off the market uh, by now, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, you see things on the internet about how it can make your gonads explode or something. Trust me, I'm a doctor. It won't make your gonads explode. I mean, don't, 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 don't trust me on your gonad health. I'm not going to say gonad again. I've said that too much for this video. Anyway, um, it's, so it seems like it's relatively safe for humans, but still handle it right. Use your gloves and all your PPE and all that stuff. Um, I've, I've had really good luck cleaning up yards with it. And one of the main reasons is I don't use it over and over. And a lot of times I will skip years with it and I also combine it with some other high powered stuff. So, but anyway, and it's cheap or compared to some other stuff. So you run it at about uh, the four pound product, you run it at about a two pint per acre rate. And what I've been spraying a lot of today, uh, two pints of the atrazine, a half an ounce of mesulfuron, a pound of the 65 WDG per diamine, and maybe even some, uh, you know, six or eight ounces of dismiss in some of these yards too. So there you go, a little atrazine talk. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll check you out in the next video. Thanks. Oh yeah, the turf mobile has been repaired. I'm very, very happy. I hate that gold bow tie thing though. But anyway, we'll check you guys out next time. It's uh, the sun is sinking into the west. So it must be Miller time.